Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just be seated for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. But before we get started, let me quickly say one thing to us. Psalm 16, verse 11 and 12. I want us to pray with that. Psalm 16. Verse 11 and 12. Bible says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. There are pleasures forevermore. Let me start by telling you something. That when you gather together like this, in the name of Jesus Christ, there is a fullness of joy. Because it's a spiritual gathering in God's presence. Not only is there a fullness of joy, there are pleasures. It's a pleasurable experience. But never forget one thing. The moment this meeting is over, you are going to step out of a spiritual experience and you are going to step back into Nigeria. And you're going to find out that many generations of Christians became addicted to church because the church experience is full of pleasure. But the moment they step into Nigeria, they are confronted with news. News like Leah Sharibu, who is in your age bracket, how in your nation she was kidnapped. How young girls are being raped. How the nation is being torn apart. How your parents are struggling. How those who graduated four or five years ahead of you are still looking for jobs and they haven't even found it. So sometimes Christians want to live inside church. Because reality, once you have left the presence of God, the reality waiting outside is the reality that God sent you as an assignment. I want you to bow your heads in prayer right now because we're going to pray a special prayer. And I believe that this prayer will help all of us. Only one prayer taken from Scripture. Only one prayer. I want you to bow your head and talk to God and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me not to look at the things that can be seen. Help me to look and see the things that are not seen. I want you to pray as a young man, as a young woman, call on God now and call on God with seriousness. Help me, Lord, not to look at the things that can be seen around me right now. I don't want to see the bad report. I don't want to see the economy of Nigeria. I don't want to see all the things that are the Nigerian reality. I want you to talk to God right now. And tell God, say, Lord, help me in the next few minutes. Open the eyes of my understanding. Help me to see into the spirit. Help me to see a glorious future. Help me to see my future. Can you bow your head and just talk to God? Talk to him. 
I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will oblige you, will permit you to see. Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Please. Uh, first of all, I want to give thanks to my hosts. You are excellent representations of the redeemed Christian Church of God experience. I want to believe that the Lord will continue to promote you and establish you in righteousness. I don't know if that was the apostle's wife. Oh, is that the apostle's wife? My God, she was so explosive. Can we appreciate her just once more? And please give my regards to the apostle. <laughs> I'm here with Pastor Henry, Pastor Taiwo, and Pastor Baski, Femi Aribake. Now, I want you to know that you are here for an appointment with your destiny. Among you here are people that God has set aside already for himself. You may not feel like it right now. You may not even look like it among all your friends. But before 10, 15, 20 years have passed, you will no longer be at this level. You will be at a level where you will be affecting nations. I came to prepare you. So I want you to listen attentively. Now, I said we should pray a prayer that God, don't help me to see the nation the way it is right now. While we look not at the things that can be seen, teach me how to see things that cannot be seen. Why? Because whatever you see can be changed. The things that you can see are not permanent. But the things that you cannot see, but God can make you to see, those are the things that are permanent. You will see in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So we're looking at nation building, and I want to tell you point blank, first of all. Some years ago, I remember 1998 or so, 1997, 98, we had a crusade in one of the universities in Nigeria. And I was so impressed when I saw the young men, the zeal, the young ladies, their zeal. It was so exciting. But there was one particular young man who was the head of the fellowship there. And the headship of that fellowship was entering his head. He was very pompous, very proud. So some of the ministers with me were going to correct him. And I said, don't correct him. Life will correct him. I looked at him and I looked eight years, six years ahead into his life. So we finished that crusade, we left. Eight years later, I saw him. The pride was gone. The youthful exuberance was gone. The excitement, unfortunately, was gone. What did I see? I saw a broken young man who graduated out of university and college and discovered that life outside college, life in the nation is a reality that is not exciting. And that's why I pray for you right now that I speak to you about nation building, you will find your destiny. God will grant you a maturity from today to see your tomorrow. You will readjust yourself by wisdom and the mercy of God will be upon you. Now, in order to do that, there is a tool that you need. Let me first of all tell you something. I get involved in a whole lot of work across the country, outside the country, in terms of practicing the faith that we study in scripture. I'm going to tell you the first challenge that we have that you must beg God from this stage to help you to adjust. 
the end times are more difficult than the early days of the church. And there's going to be a need for all of you to know something. You must know the difference between the products of the tree of life. In the Garden of Eden, there were two trees. Those two trees are still available till today. Two significant trees. The tree of life. The life of God. The life that will add color to you. The life that will promote you. The life that will protect you. The life that will give you dignity in Africa. Dignity when you travel. Dignity when you return. But there's also a tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The most disastrous Christian experience is when you mix the two. Don't forget that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil has good on it. And it is not all good that is God. Are you listening to me? In your experience in life, you are going to find out that as a believer, especially for the end times, you better know the difference of the product of the tree of life. You are talking about mind shift, not so? So pay attention to what I'm saying to you now. You begin to know from now, this nation shall be great. And it shall be made great through your generations. That's why you must not look at the reports of today. But from today, you must be able to see tomorrow. You will see that tomorrow. The tomorrow that God is showing you is only available from the tree of life, from Jesus Christ. Say, Pastor Ladi, give me an example of a good that is not God. How many of you remember the young lady who had a spirit of divination? If you have been doing your Bible study. What did she say when she saw Paul and the team when they entered the space for evangelism? What was her comment? Does anybody know? And you are sure you know, put up your hand, let me see. You are sure you've been doing your Bible study. You are sure of yourself. I don't like Christians who are not sure of themselves. Though. Oh yeah, come running, come and tell us. Put your hands together for Jesus as she comes up. Quick, 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 quick. We are going into your future for now. Just let us enter the future for the next few minutes. When we are through, you can come back to the present. Good. That young lady, Acts chapter 16, what did she have to say? These are the men of God who have come to show us the way of salvation. That's not all. Is that all? Is that all? Never forget the little details. She began to advocate that. Listen to them. Now, let me ask you a question. What that girl said, was there anything wrong with it? Hello? Was there anything wrong with it? Uh -huh. So why did Paul reject that lady? Bible says she followed them for many days, giving a word perfect message. When you get to the heights of spiritual warfare, you have better be funded from the tree of life because if you are drinking from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil what that woman said is so good that you should promote her but instead of promoting her what did apostle paul do it was a demon it was an evil spirit he had to cast out that spirit so I'm about to tell you right now, talking about the mind shift, talking about nation building, I'm going to give you the minimum requirement that God needs from you if you are going to be useful to God in your generation. Can I go ahead? I did warn you. I told you, leave the present. Let us enter the future. The Holy Spirit can help us to do things like this. I told you there are people among you here ordained by God to establish and set certain things right that have been wrong for generations. You will not fail God. 
Now, I want to take away any excuse any of you can have. I want to take away any excuse you can have. Go to the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Acts chapter 4. Sometimes I like using a Bible reader to make things faster. Can I get a Bible reader who can stay there with a microphone? Somebody can help me with scriptures. Well, quickly open Acts chapter 4 verse 13. And here you, Bible says, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled at their minds. They looked at these fellows, ill-educated, untrained. They listened to them, and they were marveling. And while they were marveling, they were wondering, how on earth can an ill-educated person, untrained person, handle professors with PhDs and leave them far behind? And the Bible says, they had to take note that they had been with Jesus. You can't be with Jesus and it will not affect your mind. One of the greatest gains of being a citizen of the kingdom of God, accepting Jesus Christ, walking with Jesus Christ, is that he does something to your mind. You say, my mother sold Akara in the market. My father is a mechanic, is no excuse. These men were raw fishermen with very little education. But you are talking about mind shift. To handle the future that God has for you, there is a special capture there's a spiritual construct that is called the mind of Christ. The day you activate, listen, the mind of Christ is a free gift. It comes with your salvation. But it has to be activated. It has to be developed. Any believer who activates the mind of Christ. Sooner or later, people around will take note that no matter what you studied in school, secondary school, college, university, they will begin to take note that there is something about you that is beyond your level of education. If that is you, can I hear you shout amen? Now, this capture called the mind of Christ, let me talk about it to you. Amen. <laughs> Bible says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the duty of the kings to do what? Search it out. So, in your life, if you are going to please God, you must operate the mind of Christ. You say, Pastor Ladi, why? I'll tell you why. The mind of God is awesome. When the Bible talks about the mind of God, it tells you that God thinks thoughts. God is a thinker. A lot of people get born again and they want to stop thinking. Bible says that if you count all the grains of sand at the babbage, it is still not equal to the amount of thoughts that God has. So, listen to me. <laughs> Two cannot walk together except they be agreed. God is a thinker. Thoughts are spiritual. God is a spirit. 
There is no human mind, no natural mind that can capture the thoughts of God. Only one mind, the mind of Christ, is the only human mindset that can capture the thoughts of God and agree with it. Jesus kept saying, by myself I do nothing. The things I do, I do them to please my father. I think like my father. I talk like him. I act like him because I think like him. Listen, God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. As, your, as the heavens are far above the earth, that's the way my thoughts are different from you. Therefore, my technology, therefore, my solutions, therefore, my counsel to you is funded from the way my father thinks. You see, because of scientific advancement, there's been a temptation for the church to relax. No matter how powerful your natural mind is, you can't walk with God with it. Hello? Now, the reason why I ask you to listen to me right now is this. Because you are a believer, you already carry the mark of Christ. When you step out of college, when you step away from your homes, as you grow into adults, the realm of the spirit is not going to listen to any excuses. Satan is afraid of you. You potentially can command and activate the mind of Christ. So if you try to use a natural mind to succeed, you are wasting your time, you are wasting everybody's time. Why? Your success only comes when you surrender to God and you surrender to God when you surrender to God's thoughts. The way God thinks. So everything Madam was preaching about is how God thinks. Don't have sex before marriage is the way God thinks. Honestly, if we apply the mind of Christ to marriage, <laughs> I don't know what the mistake I made once. I was invited somewhere to come and preach on marriage. Immediately I spoke about 15 minutes, the people started telling me, this is a hard saying. Who can, who can look at this? I said, go and see what they said when Jesus taught about marriage. The people complained. Immediately Jesus, listen, Jesus will teach marriage with the mind of Christ, with the mind of God. He's not going to tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you what will help you. He's going to tell you what will take you to a level nobody in your family has ever been before. Is it easy to have a change of mind? Why do you think the Bible says to you that I beseech you brethren? Let me tell you the meaning of that scripture. God is telling you right now, listen, if you want this nation to improve, I'm only laying the foundation I guess that's only what I probably can do here today. When God says, I beseech you, God is saying, I'm begging you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, that if you think about it, that's the best thing you could ever do for your own life. Then he goes on and says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. It is a be changed, just change. Be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Because if your mind is not renewed, Nigeria cannot change. <laughs> I'll tell you the problem I have. Sometimes I, I, I've been to places where they've slaughtered people because of the name of Jesus. Then you get into a hall. You are looking at fathers whose children, their blood is in the streets. I remember a particular town. I can't mention that town. They greeted me and said, where are the guns you brought for us? I said, don't talk. We don't want to talk. Where are the guns? If they had killed all of us, would you meet anybody here? 
Now, how do you, what do you say to people at that time? Except God gives you his word. And because they are his own, somehow his word will find a place inside them. That's the story of another day. What I'm establishing for you is very simple. I am an advocate for what I call spiritual education. What I have noticed right now, listen to me, this is for the future. This is for the future. The pedigree of redeemed Christian Church of God, starting from the days of Pa Akinda Omi, has always been quintessential, the spiritual pedigree. When the baton changed hands, it changes the hands of Daddy Adiboye. Listen, God uses time to prepare us for eternity and to protect us from eternity. One day, Pastor Debo is going to hand over the baton to somebody else again. And you better know this. Before God could select Pastor Debo and ask Pastor Akina or me to hand over the baton to him, God had looked at him and says, the mind of Christ has been activated here that will take the generation to where I want them to go. Now, don't forget, your children will do better than you. I didn't hear no amen. amen. You will do better than your parents. Amen. To do so, spiritual education becomes compulsory. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let me show you spiritual education in the Bible. How many minutes do I have left? Oh, good. Let me show you spiritual education in the Bible. You are talking about a mind shift. You want to handle this nation? This is the foundation. Without this, don't even try because you don't even know what the will of God is. You have a lot of presumptions drawn from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can get good from the tree, but that good is not God. And the good that is not God will never give you your best future. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's start from verse 12. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. To start from verse 12. 12. Start from verse 12. Verse 12. Now we have received. When? Now. Everybody stand to your feet. Pick your Bible. Now we have received. No, no, hold on. Let's read together with you. Are you ready? Get your Bible. Okay, lead us now. Let's go. Now. Now, now we have received. Uh huh. Not the spirit of the world. Yes. But the spirit which is of God, uh -huh. that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Hold on there. Tap your neighbor. Say there are some things that God has given to us freely. <laughs> Read that scripture again. Now we have received. When? When? So right now, you have received something already. If that is true, shout yes. yes. Read it again. Now we have received. Go on. Not the spirit of the world. Not the spirit of this world's intelligence. Go on. But the spirit which is of God. Uh -huh. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now help me ask your neighbor a question. Say neighbor. How many things that God has given you freely are you begging for every day? Oh yeah, put your hands together for Jesus and be seated. Come on. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory. I have found out when you don't activate the mind of Christ, your mind can't agree with God. Even the things that are free, spiritually, free to help you, to protect you, to promote you, you end up begging for them even though God has given them to you free. Go on. Verse 13. Uh-huh. Which things also we saw, not 
not in the world which man's wisdom gives the Holy Ghost to it. Uh -huh. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Go on. 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. The natural mind can never receive spiritual education. You want a mind shift. Your natural mind will never receive the things of the Spirit of God. These are things that God teaches you by comparing spiritual with spiritual. If you have a PhD in theology, does not mean that you are going to be a great believer and that you are going to have results in life. The spiritual education that God gives is by comparing spiritual to spiritual. And the Bible tells you something, the natural man with his PhD cannot understand. I have friends who are medical doctors, Christian believers. Ask them to lay hand on the sick for the sick to be healed. They are still calculating HIV. They understand the rate at which the cells are multiplying. Bring me a mechanic with an open heart towards God. Who is open to spiritual education? The mechanic has laid hands. The HIV has gone. The testimony has already been given. The next person is coming up. And that's why when we in the church begin to lift up academic education above spiritual education, the mind shift we need to handle the nation is not available. Let's go over to the last verse. Let's, let me just skip. You can go home and go and study this. Go all the way to the last verse. The last one, verse 16. Yes, sir. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, mm -hmm. that he may instruct him, mm -hmm. but we have the mind of Christ. Christ. Somebody shout, I have the mind of Christ. Now, isn't it amazing that you have the mind of Christ? But this is the challenge. Let us look at Nigeria today. Look at the problems of Nigeria today. The intellectuals have their solution. Sons of God, we have our solutions. They find it difficult to listen to us. That's why Nigeria is where it is today. Let me close by saying something. I was writing a book called The Kingdom Gospel Solution to Boko Haram. We want the destiny of God for Nigeria. Is that what we want? Let me translate it to a pedestrian level. Many years ago, I went to visit my junior brother in America. I saw a brand new Mercedes Benz in front of his house. And you know, being a typical Nigerian, I said, Woo, testimony. You got a brand new Mercedes? You know what my brother told me? So that's not mine. That's not mine. I said, whose car is that? So that's the gardener's car. <laughs> he said, listen to me. That is the gardener's car. This is a weekend. He didn't want to bring his truck. So he's going to finish his work and hitch his tools, drop it off in his office, and is off for the weekend in his Mercedes Benz. What did I call this man? What work is he doing? I, maybe I didn't hear you. Gardner. When I began to activate the mind of Christ, in church, I banned the dedication of second-hand cars in Nigeria to the glory of God. When I banned it, the Nigerian church, my uh, people arose, say, ah! I said, wait a minute. You are shouting, praise God. This car has been used in Germany until it became useless. Emission levels are too high. The government will not allow it to be driven in Germany. So they packed it somewhere. Then Emeka went to buy it. Hello. <laughs> Enterprising fellow. Emeka brought that car. 
that car has been used by four people in Germany. The four people who used that car in Germany did not pray once. Every time they bought and resold that car. Then that dented, second-handed car used four users in Germany. You brought it to Nigeria. Then a brother who has worked for 35 years, his wife for 25, make it how many years? Eh? 60 years. They combined all their life savings together. Then they bought the second-handed car and then brought it to the church. God has done it. Was it God who did that? Hello? Was it God who did that? Then all the elders of the church will now surround, will surround the, in, in the sunlight, we surround the car. Let me close here. There's a future coming. It's a glorious future. There's a future coming when buying a brand new car will no longer be a testimony. There's a future coming when owning your first home six months after you have graduated is no longer a testimony. There's a future coming when you will not need visas to leave Nigeria to go and visit the nations of the world. There is a future coming when the nations of the world will receive you with dignity. They will welcome you with dignity. You will live there with dignity. You will return home with dignity. There is a future that is coming. When all the things that you used to rush to go and buy all over the world will be made in Nigeria, perfected in Nigeria, sold in Nigeria, exported from Nigeria, there is a future that is coming. When your parents, or rather, when you as parents will not have to pay through your nose just for basic quality education in this country, there's a future coming. When you will no longer have to wear second-hand clothes, ironing them, perfuming them, and passing them off as second new. There's a future coming. Your eyes will see it. Like I told you, I want to close on this. In this book, for instance, I was saying something here. In, I think, the... I said the fourth verse of our national anthem talks about the labors of our hero's past. If you ask most people here now, who are the heroes past of Nigeria? You start talking about Nam Diazikwe, about Obafemi Awolo, you start talking about uh, Tafa Balewa. Please, stop it. Nigeria would never have been a nation today if not for the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that motivated some men while we were slaves. We used to be in slavery. They devalued us. They said we are no better than animals. They said we are still evolving. Unilineal evolution. We are still evolving. We are not yet men. We are inferior. But some men looked at the Bible and said no. They are not. And they began to fight. 1807 and 1833, abolition of slavery. These men were motivated by Jesus Christ. The slaves who helped them to get this freedom, go and find out about the African 12 in the 1800s in the United Kingdom. They were freed slaves. I'll give you one of them. There's a fellow called Oladua Ekeanu. They changed his name to Gustavus Vasa. He was in slavery. He was captured in Iseke. 
He gave his life to Christ. The Spirit of God began to help him. At the end of the day, he wrote a book on slavery. It was his book that people like William Wilberforce were able to use until human slavery was outlawed and we were classified as people again. But let me tell you something. Let us sit down in church in his presence where there's fullness of joy. At his right hand where there are pleasures forevermore. The moment we leave this spiritual environment and we step into Nigeria, we realize all over Africa today, a child is being born into abject poverty, low life expectation. He is not going to eat well all his life. He is not going to dress well. He is hardly going to wear new clothes. Somewhere along the way, he's going to attend church and he's going to get the solace of eternal life. But that's not what God wants for us. God wants much more than that for us. God wants us to have the mind of Christ. He wants us to see the future that he prepared. And there are people among you here. God will use your lives. It will not be based on the intelligence of men. It will be based on the thoughts of God. This nation will change. You will eat its goodness. Your children will call you blessed. In Jesus' mighty name.